Well, everyone, uh, thank you very much uh, for being here today. Look, it's a great deal of pleasure that uh, I announced the Shadow Ministry, and I'm really pleased to be here today with David Littleproud, uh, who will go through the detail of the Nationals. Uh, we've been able to work very closely together, and what you're seeing in this line in this lineup is uh, some fresh faces. Uh, we have an incredible depth of talent, uh, not just on the front bench, but on the back bench as well. And I've been very cognizant of trying to bring some of those people through for an opportunity. And you'll see uh, that we have uh, uh, some very impressive appointments today. I'm really proud of the fact that uh, Susan Lee, as my deputy, uh, will uh, not only be the deputy leader, uh, but the shadow minister for uh, industry, for skills and training, uh, and shadow minister for women. Um, she has uh, a very significant uh, workload, but um, Susan has uh, a great capacity and is a very significant uh, part of uh, not only our response in uh, the urban areas, but uh, in regional areas uh, as well. I'm really pleased that uh, we have uh, in our cabinet of 24, uh, 10 women. And uh, I should note that uh, Maurice Payne has asked, uh, uh, originally um, had asked me not to be considered for the shadow cabinet, um, but I've uh, worked with her very closely for a long time. I've got the utmost respect and uh, Maurice is uh, going to uh, fill the position of shadow cabinet secretary, uh, which is a very important role. She's had uh, a breadth of experience, as I say, and been an exceptional contributor to our team over many years uh, and her wise counsel and experience, I think will uh, be of great assistance to us in helping us uh, rebuild our team. Um, we have, uh, I'm very pleased to tell you, uh, from uh, the Shadow Minister for Employment uh, and Workplace Relations, uh, uh, Michaela Cash, who's going to fill that position. Uh, Karen Andrews uh, will be the Minister for Home Affairs, the Shadow Minister for Child Protection and Prevention of Family Violence. Uh, Anne Rustin is uh, in the area of uh, health and aged care and uh, the list goes on. I'm pleased that uh, Andrew Hasty is going to join us uh, from WA as the Shadow Minister for Defence. And we have uh, from Victoria uh, a number of colleagues uh, who will be on the front bench, um, but I'll make uh, note of a couple that includes uh, Sarah Henderson and also Jane Hume. Jane Hume will be the Shadow Minister for Finance uh, and Sarah Henderson, the Shadow Minister for Communications. Um, so we have a very experienced team. Uh, I want to thank all of those that uh, have served in uh, the Cabinet and in the Ministry otherwise that, uh, that won't be continuing on in those roles. Uh, but we've tried to get a balance here and uh, the balance is uh, not just across jurisdictions, not just in terms of gender, but experience. And uh, I'm very proud of, uh, of the team that we've been able to put together. Um, I'll ask David to, uh, uh, to outline his plans and uh, then we'll happy to take any questions. Thank you. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Peter. It's great to be with you and it's great to be in work through what will be a new coalition, a new coalition team that will hold this government to account. And I'm pleased to say that the National Party has secured six cabinet positions, shadow cabinet positions. I'm pleased to say that the team, the shadow ministry team that I bring forward for the National Party is about renewal and generational change. It's about making sure we draw on those that have the experience to bring the harmony and peace within our party room, but bring the next generation through. Uh, now, I'm pleased to say that I'll continue on as the Shadow Agricultural Minister, uh, that Perrin Davies, my deputy, will be the Shadow Minister for Water Resources and Emergency Management. Uh, Senator Bridget McKenzie, who's also our leader in the Senate, will now be the Shadow Infrastructure, Transport and Regional Development Minister. Uh, I'm pleased to say that trade is coming back to the National Party. Trade and tourism will be uh, held by Kevin Hogan, uh, the member for Page, who did an outstanding job during the floods in Lismore. Uh, and bringing some new energy and enthusiasm to my front bench will be Senator Susie MacDonald uh, from Queensland, who will take over the resources in Northern Australia shadow portfolio. And to round this off, I've asked uh, the former leader, Barnaby Joyce, to be the Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs and to ensure that this generational change is nurtured through. I've also asked in the Outer Ministry for Michael McCormack uh, to take on the shadow portfolio of international development and the Pacific 
one that is acknowledgement of these two men's leadership in the National Party, and one that I will continue to draw on both of them to ensure that the National Party is able to nurture the next generation in a harmonious way in making sure that we're a constructive part of this coalition, leading this coalition to the next election in 2025 and making sure that we are a credible alternative to the current government. So to you, Peter, to the Liberal Party, uh, this is a coalition that has lasted the test of time and will continue through our hard work, our collaboration and our honesty with, and transparency with one another. And I look forward to the fight that we put up uh, to this Labor government, and not only now, but right through to the 2025 election. Questions? David, you talk about renewable and generational the dynamic shifted in the coalition between the Libs and the Nats? Well, it's always predicated on the hard arithmetic of politics, as John Howard so eloquently and poignantly pointed out. So it goes down to simply the number, uh, a quota of the numbers that we hold in relation to the total coalition. So that, that formula is one that is a standard of the, uh, the test of time and will continue. Uh, and one in which Peter and I have been able to work through constructively to make sure uh, that we have team, a team, a total team, that complements one another in taking that fight up. It draws on their diversity and skills that they bring to the, to the parliament to make sure that we can not only hold them to account, but also uh, bring forward policies that are relevant to an evolving and modern Australia. Yeah. Um, what's uh, Alan Pudge doing? Uh, Alan Tudge uh, will be in the position of uh, Minister for Shadow Minister for Education. Uh, Alan's obviously uh, incredibly experienced uh, in that portfolio. He's worked uh, in the Parliament uh, uh, in an exemplary way, and uh, he is uh, is a very significant uh, part of our team. Uh, and he will uh, perform the role of uh, Shadow Minister for Education. Shadow Treasurer. Uh, Shadow Treasurer will be Angus Taylor. Uh, obviously, again, a breadth of experience uh, in government and. Uh, has, um, I think, a great capacity to hold this government to account. The reality is that we're already seeing from this government uh, excuse after excuse after excuse. They didn't know the numbers were what they were. They didn't know that the economy was going to be difficult. They didn't know that energy was going to be an issue. Well, they told the Australian people before the election that they were the party with the answers to all of these problems. But it turns out that uh, they don't have the answers. And if you look at somebody like Chris Bowen, it's obvious that he has the choices between him in terms of what uh, he has to do on energy and he can't make a decision. Uh, and it's going to be tougher under Labor over the next three years. There's no question about that. And the team that we bring together today, uh, Julian Lisa, who's going to come into the Attorney General portfolio and uh, into Indigenous uh, Affairs, uh, an incredibly bright individual and somebody who has contributed to our party uh, for a long period of time. So some new faces coming in. Uh, about which I'm, I'm really genuinely excited and uh, I think our team will work very closely together to hold uh, this government to account. Why haven't you got an Indigenous person in the role of Shadow Minister for Indigenous Affairs? Well, as, as you know, uh, Jacinta Price uh, sits in the National Party and she's just come into, uh, into the Parliament. So um, we will have, uh, I hope, uh, uh, a job for her very shortly, but um, she's uh, just come into the Parliament now. and. Uh, will be a significant contributor, as you've seen already. I mean, she's not uh, opposed to making comments uh, and to contributing to public debate. She's a very thoughtful, informed person, uh, and no doubt uh, at some stage she'll be on the front bench, but she's just coming to the parliament now. Shouldn't you have someone with lived experience in that role? Uh, well, you've got uh, somebody like Alan Tudge, for example, who's worked in uh, and alongside uh, uh, people like Noel Pearson and within the Indigenous space. Uh, Julian Lesser, uh, again, one of the smartest minds in the parliament, uh, is well versed in, uh, in this space and I, I want to make sure that um, Jacinda has, uh, has a very significant role and there'll be uh, a process within the coalition to look at what the government's proposing. Uh, and there'll be a very specific focus from us on practical uh, ways in which we can provide support to Indigenous communities, uh, not just in capital cities but obviously in regional and remote areas. I want to make sure that uh, uh, we can increase uh, the support provided, the health outcomes, the education outcomes, the housing outcomes, uh, and as a team we will be working on that because it's one of the most significant issues that uh, as a country we have to deal with. You lost votes to the left and the right in the election. Which votes are you trying to appeal to with this front bench? To all of them. Uh, to all of them. I think uh, there will be a lot of people with buyer's remorse uh, 
uh, by the end of this three-year period because uh, the decisions that Labor make uh, will drive up inflation. The decisions that Labor makes over the course of the next three years, which is obvious already, uh, they, they hadn't even included all of their spending proposals uh, in the pre-election pre uh, figures that they released. And already you have uh, a ratings agency, which is out there talking about our AAA rating being negatively impacted because of the amount of money that Labor is proposing to spend. Now, if you spend that in a high inflationary environment, interest rates will be higher, cost of living will be higher under Labor, and that's going to be the lived experience, uh, unfortunately, but that's uh, what Labor do. They always spend more than what they have, which is why they tax more, uh, and that has a dampening impact on the economy as well. So uh, there's, uh, there's a lot ahead that we'll have to deal with. And the team that we announced today, I think, has a great capability uh, and the great capacity to take the fight up to, uh, to Labor, to propose good policy by the time of the next election, uh, but to hold this government to account. I think uh, what, what, they, what, what people have seen uh, in my history uh, is somebody who's dedicated himself to public life uh, since the age of 19. And I have worked as a police officer and I worked in the area of uh, sexual abuse, uh, went to countless domestic violence incidents. Um, all of us uh, have those experiences that will stay with us forever. And I want to do whatever I can in this position to reduce the incidence of domestic violence, uh, violence against children. As the Home Affairs Minister, I cancelled the visas of 6,000 criminals in our country, uh, including a very sharp focus uh, on people who had committed sexual offences against women and children. And that was quite deliberate because I've worked in the sex offenders area and had prosecuted people for rape and sexual assault. And many of those young lives are destroyed. And I want to do, as I say, whatever I can to uh, improve the situation. Um, when you look at the lineup that we've got, uh, we've got some exceptional talent, uh, men and women. And uh, the 10 women that we've got in the cabinet uh, will be a very significant part of speaking at, with one voice to the Australian public that um, um, we do want to win votes back from uh, women who supported uh, the Greens, for example. Uh, don't forget that people left the Labor Party at this election as well. Uh, and uh, we, we've got a good story to tell, and I intend to tell it. Just on the uh, second act of intimidation by the Chinese military in the South China Sea, is that concerning for Australia? Well, it's very, it's, it, is, it is concerning, and uh, I think it vindicates the position that the government uh, under Scott Morrison took uh, uh, before the election. Uh, this is a very serious time and we will support uh, the government in whatever actions uh, they need to take to keep our country safe. Uh, an act of aggression, uh, as we've seen here, uh, is not dissimilar to what we've seen on a regular basis in the East China Sea. Uh, the reality is that the Japanese are experiencing these sort of provocative acts and acts of aggression on a daily basis on the water uh, and elsewhere. And uh, China says one thing, but, uh, but you've got to look at their actions, and their actions here are dangerous, and uh, the government is right to point, them, to, to, uh, point out that uh, this can put lives at risk uh, of the Australian Defence Force, and in this case, the, Australian, uh, the Royal Australian Air Force. Uh, it's very concerning, and we'll support the government uh, in whatever action they take uh, to keep our country safe. Why did you intervene to stop dual indigenous names being given to military bases? Well, because I have a great deal of respect for uh, Gallipoli Barracks, for example, uh, or uh, Kapuka and, and other sites around the country, which have uh, a lot of history. And when you speak to the men and women of the Australian Defence Force, uh, they didn't support a change in those names. There's a lot of heritage and people have served uh, on those bases for a long period of time, in peacetime and in wartime. And uh, I think when you look at the recognition, the acknowledgement uh, of Indigenous leaders within those local communities, the engagement with those leaders. Uh, Defence was an exemplar in that area. But did I think that uh, we should abolish the name of Gallipoli Barracks? No, I didn't. Uh, and that reflected, as I said, uh, my consultation with men and women of the Australian Defence Force on the ground. Well, I was suggesting two names. It wouldn't be abolishing the name. Uh, well, on the, on, you, you can go back and uh, have a look at some of the detail, um, but I uh, made it very clear that uh, I wasn't going to allow uh, those names to be degraded because they have a significant place in our country's history. And there are men and women who have fought 
uh, in conflicts or in peacekeeping missions. They've trained on those bases and there is a lot of uh, sentimental attachment uh, and a lot of history that goes with it and I wasn't going to disrupt that. It wasn't a sign of disrespect because, as I said, uh, Defence engages with uh, local Indigenous groups on a daily basis. They have a very significant say in uh, developments and uh, that's as you would expect it. And uh, so it's not, not a degrading of that, but uh, I, I, I felt that uh, in consultation with the men and women of the Australian Defence Force, that was the right decision to take. Do you think Indigenous people who serve find it degrading to have Indigenous names? On the I, I, think, uh, I, I think they serve their country with great pride and distinction. Uh, and frankly, I don't think uh, uh, their skin colour um, makes any jot of difference to it. They are proud Australians. And uh, I'm proud of every Australian that's worn the uniform for our country. And when I speak to those men and women, uh, some of whom uh, have lost uh, some of their colleagues uh, in war and they trained at these facilities with them. Uh, I think there is uh, a lot that we should respect and I did respect that uh, and that's the, why I made the decision I did. Do you know anything more about the manoeuvre from this um, RAA plane? I, I don't. Only, only what, uh, we haven't uh, received a briefing from the government so only what's publicly available at the moment. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.